fasting is something which seems very unpleasant to us. And yet, we know that for hundreds of years, for many centuries, the Catholic Church has had holy men and holy women who thrived on fasting. People who, besides the obligatory fasting prescribed by the Church, who fasted voluntarily. Why is this so? What is their secret? Can it be that these men and women did not feel the same suffering that we in the 21st century feel today? And how come that even today we have people, religious, who fast and seem to not suffer with fasting? They seem to get a pleasure in fasting. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And today, together, we are going to penetrate into the secret way in which you can fast well. It will become easier for you, more pleasurable for you, and above all, much more fruitful for you. So, Father Michael, what does it, what do you think makes fasting so unpleasant for people today? Of course, in all times, uh, in the, because of our human condition, expe- after original sin especially, but probably even before, mm. in a sense, suffering is very difficult. It's very difficult. We all try to, in some way, as if to say, try to get out of it here or, or there, even if without perceiving it sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we, it's instinctive. Suffering, uh, we understand it as something to be avoided, something that's bad in itself. Mm-hmm. When we see suffering in ourselves or in other people or in even animals, we see it some, as something rep- that must be put aside, uh, avoided. It's not good. Yeah, in fact, suffering, some people use it. I'm sure you've seen as well, brother. Some people use the existence of, existence of suffering as an argument that God does not exist. Because if God existed, yeah, yeah. some suffering that, could that's not exist. To take it to extremes. Just, yeah. But even the people that don't go so far, yeah. even those that want to practice virtue are, are, are striving to go clo- come closer to God, suffering is the big obstacle, especially yeah. in, our, in our day and age where suffering, probably in many other ages, Suffering was much well, much better understood. Yeah, but in our day and age, in our times, suffering is considered something that almost is contagious. <laughs> it's a contagious disease. Yeah. If the person sees another one suffering, they almost don't even want to be next to them because maybe some of that suffering is going to come close to me. Uh, this happens. Not everyone, of course. Yeah, and yeah. fasting is an effort. It's an effort that the person has to take, and that makes the person suffer. That's against his own instincts, right? Exactly. um... That's in itself. But since today, the understanding is that this suffering is not is is difficult. It's it's uh, it should be shunned. Suffering, fasting in itself becomes much more difficult as well. Yeah. In fact, I've seen once, Father, now that you mentioned it, I remember seeing once on the road a man with a T-shirt and they had the, he had the following phrase, the sentence on the T-shirt, if it's not fun, you're not doing it right. I mean, that shows a certain attitude towards life, which is much which is more common not, than it seems. Yes. If one somehow feels that if something is not pleasurable in itself, something is intrinsically wrong. It's yes. axiologically wrong. That exactly. should not exist. And I think one of the things that somebody might have thought when they when they came to watch this video is that you might say, "Oh, maybe there's a fun way of suffering." So let's uh, try prob- to, no? Yeah, let's try to avoid suffering now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But is that going to be the answer? I don't know. No, no, no. Well, well I think that's going to be part of the answer. As incredible as it seems. Yes. There is a way to fast where you can suffer less than you're suffering now. And uh, that is not that is not just a bait for the person to watch the video. No, exactly. that is true. Exactly. Yeah. So, one of the ways, first of all, to overcome this uh, suffering, the desire to avoid the suffering, uh, everything that's entirely the opposite of what we know we should fast. Mm-hmm. We know that it's part of the rules of the church, the, the desires of our Lord Jesus Christ. But 
one of the difficulties, like we were talking about, is that sometimes we don't have the notion of the reasons for which we are fasting. Yeah. And the reasons why we should confront the difficulties inherent to fasting itself and suffering as the background yeah. of all of this. Fasting is a type of suffering, yeah. yes. which is actually uh, very important to what we're, we're, what we're talking about now, what we're going to talk about. Well, yes. Dr. Plinio once mentioned that he compared two ways of suffering. I think we mentioned this in some podcast, I'm not sure, that he imagined two people lying in two parallel rooms and one room, both of them are going through a procedure. One is going through an operation where they're cutting up open his hand, they're doing all sorts of things because he has a serious disease in his hand. He would lose his whole arm, but they're doing a surgery on him to cure him. Yeah, he's, suffering. he's suffering. He's suffering. And the surgery they're obliged to do without, they cannot do anesthesia or whatever. There is some reason why that surgery is extremely painful for him. Mm. In the next room, there's somebody who's going through something where he's being tortured. Now, he also goes through intense pains on his arm because mm. he's being tortured on his arm. Both of them are going through very crucial pains. And yet, nobody doubts that the one who's going through the surgery suffers much lesser. Because the fact that he knows that it's for his own good, that he's going to come out of that better than before, is going to give him a joy, a hope, which makes him resist much better. So, just the fact that even if you're going through the exact same physical sensation... Yeah, both the, are suffering. Yeah. Both are suffering very much. The reason when you think about it, when you understand it, that by itself reduces half or more than half of your suffering. Then you know why you're doing it. Exactly. I guess that's one of the worst pains in hell. You know that you're suffering and you're not going to come out of it and you're not going to get merits for that and you're not going to become better because of that. No, that is pure suffering, which is a chastisement of God, which is different from our suffering. Yes. Some people think that maybe it's uh, like from Brother Johnson now, it's a chastisement from God. But suffering makes up, it's a part of the, of, 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 of reality, right? It's a part of, uh, yeah. it's, it, it's something it theological. Right? It's something that I think the world could not exist without suffering. Uh, even so, we can say, oh, fine, God did, d doesn't suffer. But the second person of the Holy Trinity himself wanted to suffer. He became man. Yes, it was not an exactly a necessity, but yeah, he, he wanted it. It's so much in into the in in being itself, right? In uh, in the whole reality itself, that the second person, Holy Trinity himself, came down to suffer, and he did it not just to suffer for us, but he did it to glorify the Father. To exactly suffering, it's very important that we that we understand uh, what Doctor Plinio says about suffering, and he calls it. It's not really of course, an eighth sacrament. But in its effects, sometimes it could be compared to an eighth sacrament because the sacraments produce grace for our mm -hmm. sanctification. And suffering, what is it? It's, it's a way that we can make reparation for what was committed through the sin of Adam and Eve. And it was all of humanity that committed yeah. the sin. Even though we can't pay for sin in itself, it's a way to show our love for our Lord Jesus, for God, for our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a way to make amends, right? And so it puts the equilibrium back into place. <laughs> After original sin, the equilibrium was broken. Yeah. Uh, of humanity, mm -hmm. even with the angels, but of course, the, that in the, in the general sense, that's more... The angels had sinned right? even before yes. man. But as, at least as far as human race was concerned, with Adam's sin, exactly. the natural order was broken entirely. And that's why it was necessary for our Lord Jesus Christ to come down and pay for the, the sin because he was the only one. Being infinite, they could pay for an infinite sin. But each and every one of us can participate in that. And so in the sufferings, we have to understand that a world without suffering would be br would would be bland. Actually, yes, yeah, a terrible. World. It would, there would be no possibility to show our love entirely. We could not offer, offer sacrifices, and there we get into a little bit uh, about w how we have to, in order to fast well, more easily. 
We have to understand Why? the reasons. Fasting? We have to understand that we're doing it out of love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That we're making a sacrifice because we want to show that we love Him. We yes. want to follow His rule, yes, because as St. Thomas Aquinas says that fasting helps us to, to repress our, our bad inclinations, that already there we're going to uh, have better control of our own selves. Not yeah. only because it is a good uh, exercise of, of willpower. Yeah, to better your personality. Exactly. Right? But it's also because there's a certain amount of materialism within our human side, the, the body, yeah. that we have to kind of put aside so that our spirit can fly, that can go up. And so the, be the better that we kind of keep down our, mm, our bodily uh, material side, yeah. then we can take more advantage, we can understand better the spiritual things. This has been always the practice of the saints. How was it possible that St. Yeah. Anthony of the Desert go out and do penance, do his fasting? Then many, many monks would do fasting 40 days in the desert, not yeah. entirely as perfect as our Lord Jesus Christ, but yeah. this was a way of uh, putting aside material things, earthly things, worldly things, and raising up to heaven. But with that final intention, very clear. Yes. Because if I'm going to go and just know, I'm going to go as, like, a, as a, a faster, I'm going to go fasting, and, and I don't really understand what I'm going to get out of it, Why? what are the reasons behind it, and in what this show, shows love for God, then it's going to be much harder. I'm going to forget. Yeah. I'm gonna forget it. the next time something mm -hmm. goes by that I that I decided to give up. I don't know. It might be chocolate or whatever. Some yeah. people give up chocolate. That's that's up to each each and every one. It's not something that. But then then there's the, the days of fasting, given by the church, of course. But which, which are these days, Father? Just for yeah. so we have the fasting on Ash Wednesday. And then on Good Friday. The only two days which are only entirely days obligatory today. In 365 days of the year. We have yeah. Yeah, exactly. We have abstinence on Fridays and also on these two days. But then we, these two days of fasting. Yes. And basically, it's very, very easy because mm -hmm. uh, there should not be three main meals on that day. Only one main meal and the other two should not equal that meal. main meal, a whole yeah. meal. It depending, of course, on the, on, the uh, on each diocese, mm -hmm. on the, in each country, the, the bishops and whatnot. But it's something very easy. Yes, Father, I have a question. Uh, in recent times, uh, there have been researchers showing that fasting is good for health, is good for... And so now if a person does just fasting, he just fasts for health benefits... Is it uh, is it the same thing as what's the difference between uh, yeah fasting for the church and fasting for that's exactly oh, the the person might even be able to do it hmm. it makes it easier to fast because he wants to lose weight for example yes if he has his end clear it makes it a lot easier for example people yeah. that fast in order to lose weight. Or they they watch their their diet because they want to run well. If they're an athlete, for example, then it makes it easier if they know they have their end clear. But yeah, those uh, are human ends. Yes, of course, it it may have a reward, but only a human reward. Human ends have human rewards. So if the person fasted in order to be a good athlete, his reward will be probably be, the, be, good athlete. be a very good athlete. Yeah. We don't know whether he'll get heaven, but he'll get a exactly. gold medal. Exactly, he might be running a different direction. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> there are good athletes that might be running in a good direction, 
here on earth and also in heaven. But we have to be spiritual athletes. Yeah. Like St. Paul says. The people of this world. People they, of this world, they fast for mm. many other reasons. And these fasts. And they're able to do it really well. And these fasts are in general much more terrible. Much more. Much yes. Than what the ch church has. I remember But, a person who I met once. He was so fat. He was so fat. That, and he started having all sort of health problems. And the doctors told him, my friend, either you're going to lose weight. And he had tried going on all sort of diets, but he didn't really have the will to lose weight. And it came up and the doctor told him, I, my friend, are they going to lose weight now? Seriously lose weight? Or we'll have to amputate your two legs? Because things reach that point. The man <laughs> lost weight like this. Of course, I because mean, he didn't want to lose his two legs. Yeah. And he found it suddenly easy. It was not so difficult for him anymore, what he could not do before. Exactly. So the end, one, the clearer the end, the stronger is the willpower to arrive there. And that's with everything. Yeah. That's with everything. If we have clearly before our eyes the end with which we're going to do something, the, 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 the final point, the aim that we have, but it's very clear, we see it right before our eyes, then it's easier. For example, mm. if we know that there's a lion that got... It escaped from the zoo, for example, or, or in India that you have you have lions, or in, in some places, right? You do uh, have lions, tigers, tigers, tigers. Yeah, all <laughs> or, but someone said, no, there's a lion out there. That's okay. We know it's he's there, but it, we don't see him very closely. So even if he's very close. Our life's not going to change too much yeah. unless uh, we have a clear notion that he's there close by. Yeah. So imagine you're walking by and <sighs> immediately the adrenaline pops into action, action everything. But everything becomes very, very clear. Yeah. Now... It didn't change the place where the lion was because he was there within the woods there. But we didn't know it. Yeah. We, did, we thought it was a, a long mm. ways away. God, we want to love him. We want, we want to serve him. We want to uh, do this fasting for him. But since it seems he's so far away sometimes because we don't see him, he's not... Uh, physically, well, he, in the he, Eucharist, but we don't see him, we don't feel him, we don't. So sometimes all of this suffering, fasting, seems to not make that much sense yeah. Father, because it's not so clear. Excellent, Father. I was wondering how you were going to relate a lion to fasting. and. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, but it's true. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's the... The f distant reality to the close reality. Yes. We the have close that. reality is very necessary for us to understand everything in the, in the supernatural sense. But the reality is always there. Mm -hmm. But in our minds, sometimes it's distant. So fasting, yeah, what am I going to get out of it? Yeah, okay, whatever. But if it's very clear uh, what we're doing it for, the love of God, the sacrifice also to, re to repress our inclinations. And also St. Thomas Aquinas says, in order for us to be able to uh, go up to God, but also to pay for our sins. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because which one of us doesn't have something to, that we, you know, we know that it's nagging at our conscience. Oh, we went to confession. Yes, but something still s says that yeah. maybe maybe we should grow in repentance for that because after confession we yeah. need to have a uh, sufficient um, repentance in yeah. order to pay for the for the the temporal penance, right? yeah. penance. and so what helps is also fasting <laughs> and what you were saying father the the tendency when we suffer is to always start thinking of who's to blame, right? 
we forget that <laughs> we have been sinners all our lives and yeah. and uh, <laughs> like saint thomas said uh, saint thomas aquinas said that a venial sin deserves death and a mortal sin deserves hell and we have been pardoned of all of that and when a small suffering comes our way we just forget that uh, all our life is we are in death yeah in we fact, should have been dead already in fact even if we were not we had not committed let's suppose somebody who were our lady she never committed a single mortal sin something unthinkable absurd nor even a venial sin nor the least imperfection she was always do giving the best of herself during her whole life excellent but even she had the reason to be grateful towards god because god created her freely exactly god redeemed her redeemed her before she she never had sin but she was redeemed beforehand freely she received all that she received freely and she has a debt towards god of course she can never pay that debt she can't go up to god here yeah, now we are yeah. even she can do but what she did do is that she assumed with love with enthusiasm all the suffering that god god did send her but much more than that she even assumed upon herself many voluntary sufferings for the glory of god and for our sake uh-huh yes and in that she had no sin that's she another no sin. one of the that's another secret to fasting well because suffering is akin to fasting as we said mm-hmm. but it's also a way in suffering offering up sacrifices we touched on this a little bit earlier it's a way to show love our lord jesus christ could only show love through suffering wow not yeah. not only but he could only show the apex of love yeah through I suffering mean, you can say that i can i can tell somebody i love you and then enjoy my life i mean yeah maybe true or may not be but if they're not how do i know uh, do I ready know? to suffer yeah for the other it's in any way love. yeah exactly. it's true love and the blessed mother she wanted to give that's the that's the, the that's what love is generosity so how could she give something to god how could she give back to our lord jesus christ through offering up some type of sacrifice if she couldn't offer up a sacrifice she wouldn't feel happy because how could she show her love for our lord jesus christ and that's yes. with all of us that's with the saints that's with uh, they we show love here on this earth through sacrifice so for example a mother a mother who has a child who she says oh i love him so much i'm just not ready to do any sacrifices for him that's not a mother that's not, i don't know that's what that is i mean that <laughs> so if we want to show our love we want to love but we want to show our love also and to as if to say make our mm, ourselves pay for the sins that we've committed mm-hmm. and that we want to reestablish that equilibrium that was taken out we want to do a penance yeah. yes we want to fast but not only food or things that we like to do but above all spiritual things yeah Mm-hmm. spiritual fasting for example father well for example if we have a a bad tendency to to be uh lazy in doing doing our doing our work or even doing a spiritual reading that we normally would like to do but we always keep putting it off a spiritual fasting can be in a way that no i'm going to put aside other things i'm going to rep- yeah. reprimand my inclinations mm-hmm. and put here this good thing which is spiritual reading about the lives of the saints or about uh, spiritual how to acquire virtues or about our lady or about the scriptures uh, the bible or or theological things as well Father, I don't know if I understood right what you said. Uh, is this um, we are trying when we fast? We are it's out of love for God, right? It, yes. We are we we are we are telling God that we love you more than this food, more than this. Uh, we love this. We love our uh, love spiritual reading as well. We love, as well. 
Is that what is? But I think also, brother Namish, is that what enters into fasting is that, of course, this comes in another aspect. That there are things that I enjoyed, that I have, which I should not have had. For example, a sinful pleasure, or anything, or even things that God gave me freely, which I did exactly. not deserve, but I received it. Either something, a gift, free gift that I got, or something mm-hmm. which I robbed from God, something which was not mine. I took it for myself. Now. God pardons me with His own precious blood for this, but I want to show Him that I'm really sorry. I'm going to take something which is mine, which I can use legitimately. This pen is mine; it's not wrong in using it. I'm not robbing it from anybody, but yes. I give it to God. I think that is fasting. I mean, I should not have committed that sin which I did. I did. I took something from God which was not mine. Yeah. But I have yes. a right over this ice cream. I can eat it. It's not wrong. But to somehow help to make preparation for that sin of mine, that which I can have legitimately, I'm giving it up. As a sign that I am repentant of having taken something illegitimately, I think that's another one more reason for us to fast. Yes, to exactly. And fasting. if we have all these things very clear in our minds, it's going to make it easier to fast. But Father, and I'm sorry, being easier to fast, then all of the good results of fasting is going to make it easier for us to understand better. And so one thing helps the other. Yeah. And so little by little, we have to understand that fasting is not something that we can arrive at the perfection of doing it well in one day. Yeah. We have to know that this is a process of perfecting ourselves. And the more we love God, the more not only is it going to be less difficult to fast, we're not going to be able to go without fasting. We're not going to be able to put aside offering up sacrifices. Because we've seen, for example, saints like St. Catherine of Siena. She went several years without eating anything. Well, that was a miraculous case. It was miraculous, but but we know that there was suffering involved. Yeah. Yes. There was suffering involved, not only in her case, but look in, look, we can look at all the, all the, the mystics and all that they go through. Every time that our Lord Jesus Christ gives them a very, very special grace, the highest graces entail greater suffering. Father, if you For remember, example, uh, sorry, the, no, no. but uh, St. Francis of Assisi with the stigmata. Yeah. Imagine he has the stigmata, but there's no suffering there. Oh, yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't feel any suffering. Or St. Saint, Saint Padre Pio, St. Pio. Uh, one time they asked him, what was the, the wound that, that made him suffer the most? If it mm-hmm. was the, the hands or the feet or the side, say, oh, it's the shoulder. Oh. They didn't know they had the shoulder wound. <laughs> the cross. <laughs> because he had, never, he had never made it known. And that's one of the things also is when we receive suffering, offer it to God. And not to others. And that's why in the readings, we see that we should not fast for the others, others to see. Yeah. We should fast for God to see. Mm-hmm. Because being between us and God. And that's what all, all, the, all the, those who receive the stigmata, many mystics, they try to hide their wounds externally. But they want, or they ask God that, they take away the external things that people can see. But not the but pain. But they don't want the pain to go away at all. I think, and that's where the true joy comes from. The and true the joy true comes joy from? The true joy, that inner peace, that you're not doing it to show anybody, you're doing it for God. And also the joy is to know that one is entirely in consonance with God. The yeah. more that we forget about our own uh, egoistic uh, little material things, yeah. daily life things, we forget about that, and we lose ourselves in the in the vision of God. Even if we don't have a direct vision, but a spiritual vision based on grace, then that creates joy, and the desire to suffer for God becomes greater and greater and greater. Why? Because we know that's the way to. To unite ourselves to God. That's beautiful, Father. It reminds me of St. Teresa of Child Jesus, that she used to pray for suffering. 
and it was her dream to s- die a terrible death full of suffering getting a horrible disease and one fine day she it was not it wasn't day it was night still she started coughing and she felt a strange liquid a warm liquid come out of her mouth when she coughed and she thought can it be blood she felt exultant can this be a sign that i finally have a mortal disease this it gave her so much joy to think about that that she made a second sacrifice of not turning the light on immediately or the fire no it was immediately to see if that was blood she held it up till morning for her to discover in the morning with joy it was blind it was blood and then she took on her last disease her last suffering of course this pleasure didn't last the whole time she went through terrible moments but in the inner part of her soul she had this joy and when it began and in the end she always had that joy because she knew because of love that is true yeah, love that, how can you have she even sacrificed a, a spiritual joy that exactly, exactly. of seeing that she was going to that sub exactly that that that's one it's there's a certain mystery in this for us at least yeah. that how can it be that at the apex of suffering there's at the same time a type of apex of joy hmm. wouldn't suffering annul that joy or wouldn't that joy annul that suffering <laughs> and it's they are entirely uh, they can come together but the joy of following god is always there at some point to sustain the person god sustains the person in that joy even though the person lost everything in certain sense but there's something there yeah. of that joy that nothing in this world can give nothing in this world can give uh, except this love of god and even in the most difficult moments and that's why there was a saint who was praying before a crucifix and he was just overjoyed with the sufferings that he received in prison and one day he was uh, exclaiming out alo- aloud to our lord he said my lord you've deceived me it was like everyone knew that he was a very pious and saintly person what what was he meaning and he said my lord you promised me suffering and you've given me uh, joy, joy. Wow. you've promised me difficulties and you've given me sweetness you've deceived me oh lord so which means that he had given himself up entirely for the suffering for the but our lord jesus christ gives exactly the opposite of what the devil yeah it prepares for the person because when god promises something he promises many times suffering trials difficulties fasting uh, rules as if to say mm-hmm. but he gives always a joy that's much much greater than the suffering that the person goes through and it's yes. little by little that joy goes growing 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 until at a certain point there's no suffering that can overcome that joy yeah. but the devil's exactly the contrary he promises oh pleasure here do this do whatever you want do that thing that's sinful because it's pleasurable you're going to be so happy with this you're going to have money you're going to have this you're going to have that pleasure you're going to have but when it's something that is in the line of the devil that's sinful that is something or even something that in itself wouldn't be bad but since it's separate from god running it's away far from suffering from god running away from suffering then the suffering comes upon the person when the person's all alone they start to have a bad yeah. conscience yeah. and at all sorts of Remorse, moments frustration the frustration comes into their lives and that's why we have so many people uh upset with their whole lives they don't have yeah. any solution the, the suicide rates go way depression. up uh, depressions yes. not that all depression comes from this but many m- many many depressions can come from this yeah and and now and this leads to the the third thing that's very important in our days especially and that can help us to fast well uh, is also the thing that 
suffering, it's also a to do with suffering. Yes. Many times people today don't embrace suffering. Interesting. No? They don't embrace suffering. In order to embrace that which God permits, to embrace suffering doesn't mean to look be a sadist, I uh, guess. To be a fa- fakir, fakir, fakir. Yeah. or, or a <laughs> or person a that, yeah. that sleeps on nails. No, it's not that. We don't have to look for unnecessary sufferings. But those sufferings that God does permit us, and there's so many. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't have to look too far because there's so many. There's the health, insecurity, uh, difficulties, we're not the c- misunderstandings because we're not yeah, the center of everything. Fasting as well. That's fasting, part of it. And that's what we're talking about. Lent is a time where we can take something specifically and put it in the hands of God that God wants and everyone together, the yeah, whole yeah. church. So, so we're community. together. Yeah. It's not just something that I do or something that the other one does. Mm-hmm. And even in the small sacrifices that can differ, everyone together is doing something. Yeah. So we are embracing suffering God. as a community, as, exactly. an, as an assembly, that is a church, not just as individuals. And uh, that's what we were talking about yeah. before, yes. the the embracing of suffering. The, the person doesn't, doesn't like to accept the suffering and... Yeah. And he flees from suffering. When he has to suffer, he tries to do the minimum possible. And the thing is, is this, that the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, when the person receives the cross and goes to the cross and kisses the cross, that cross becomes lighter because there's someone helping to carry it. And it's our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But when we flee from the cross, that cross is still going to, it's going to grow. It's going to grow because we're going to we're going to disaccustom ourselves to making any sacrifice. Yeah, and life is And so when the worse. sacrifice comes, it's going to fall hard. Oh, and it will yes. come in this valley of tears, it will come. It always and we're, comes. And away from our Lord Jesus Christ, it will be the devil is not going to help you carry your cross. No, yeah, exactly. He's, he's yeah. going to be the Sit one on it. sitting yeah. on it and pushing you over. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, all the tremendous. stories that you said, Father, the all the saints the saint who complained that uh, he got sweetness instead of bitterness, or Saint Therese who felt joy in the blood. All of them got that pleasure from fasting, from penance, from suffering, because they entered into it wholeheartedly. Exactly. And the only reason a, they, they could do that wholeheartedly was because yes. they understood the reason why they were yeah, suffering. Yeah, it wasn't a pagan suffering, let's yeah. say. Yeah, exactly. the, the, because everyone suffers. Yeah. Everyone suffers. But... Receive suffering as something, as a a way of purifying myself, as a way of loving God more, of offering this up to God. That's what all the saints did. And when you look at all the saints, there's no sad saint. Yes. But they all suffered. Yeah. They all suffered, like you said in the beginning. They all suffered as like an operation that was perfecting. Uh, not something that you're going to amputate maybe, but you're going to perfect everything. You're cutting this, but you're going to perfect it, and it's going to grow back better. Yes, It's like when our Lord Jesus Christ said that the trees have to be, uh, the limbs have to be cut. Pruned. And you have to prune it. And what happens? It grows, it gives it more better. fruit. Uh-huh. It gives better uh Better fruit, better results, better well, whatever I, it may be. I don't know. I, I remember the, um, not a story of a saint, but a sinner who suffered. I, just, uh-huh. I don't know if, if you've heard it before, Father. Uh, it's about, uh-huh. it, it was a thief in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Uh-huh. A thief in the Middle Ages. And um, the thing is, when he was younger, when he was really young, he he had a devotion to Our Lady. Mm. But then he grew up and he didn't take it seriously, his devotion to Our Lady, and uh, he became a bad person, became a thief. Uh, and he, he was a notorious thief. He would, uh, he was known uh, to, to not only just steal, but to beat up people and kill people. And he was a menace in, in, in the city. And, but uh, one day he was passing by a church and he saw an image of Our Lady, a statue of Our Lady. And he remembered his devotion to Our Lady. And he said... Uh, this is it. 
I can't stop. I can't stop uh, robbing people. I can't stop beating up people. But uh, I can do this. He said. He said um, on Saturdays there was a custom in those days. On Saturdays, some people who were really devoted to our lady would fast on Saturdays. Yeah. To in honor of our lady. Okay. And so he decided to do this to fast, but not just fast from food. But he said he would. He would. Uh, He thought, no, should I abstain from robbing? No, I can't. I can't abstain from stealing. I have to steal so, every day. Too difficult for him. And uh, so he said, fine. On Saturdays, I will, I will, I will abstain from beating up people. Oh, no. <laughs> just not. Just, you can rob, but just he can. Not he's going to rob, but he's going to. But it was up. a step. Oh, yeah, a step. So. and much more so, it was a step in the hands of Our Lady. It was not just. Of, yeah. And then. And then what happened is, um, so one Saturday. He was. He entered. He broke into somebody's house, and he was going to. He found the gold. It said he was taking it out, and he was uh, almost uh, escaping. And when the owner woke up, and he, the owner with a huge club in his hand, came to beat him up, and he, and he took out his club, and he, and he remembered. Oh, today's Saturday. Oh no, I can't. What's I can't beat do? him. I can't hit him. And then he couldn't hit the owner in time, and so he was caught. And they caught him, and he. Finally managed. Uh, the next day was a huge uh, uh, uproar, I guess, in the yeah, city. Yeah, in the city. Like, yeah, yeah he finally got the mass murder and whatever, and the, the, uh, he beat up so many people, etc. And so they had a public trial. The judges uh, in those days, uh, the the it was capital punishment, right? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The, yeah. Would, very, yeah. He killed somebody. He, he has to die. Yeah. And so um, yeah, that's what the church practice. I mean, this was the state which was doing it, but yes, the it was within the church law. It was within the yes, and so then the judge. I, you've heard the story. No, mm-hmm. never, never, never. No, yeah, my myself as well. <laughs> I, we have to uh, yeah. assist all of this podcast because <laughs> <laughs> no. Then he said um, the judge uh, decided to. He, he, everybody said they started uh, deciding that um, that yeah he has to die etc. That's a uh, punishment. And uh, and before they could um, and they asked him to defend right. So the guilty has to defend himself. And he said, do you have anything to say? He said, I just want to say that I was wrong all my life. And uh, he received a grace right. He received uh-huh. a grace. And Our lady said, interceded for him. Yeah. I was wrong all my life, and this is yes. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm really sorry for what I've done, etc. I'm a bad person, and I deserve to die. Wow! And uh, and I deserve to die, and I'm going to die, uh, um, uh, knowing that f- finally I've gotten what I've deserved, and I'm some. I've done something worthy in life by dying. Wow! And so and the judge was impressed. He said, "No, man like this doesn't deserve to die." <laughs> Imagine, yeah, because they were so used to <laughs> yeah. uh, other no, situations. No, it's not my fault. It's because Imagine something that. else. Yeah. And so the judge gave him a chance. So you can live another life. We give you a second chance. Change your life. Um, you can. They. You find a wife or something. Or make a start a family. And you can go to another town. Uh, but uh, uh, we need people like you in the side. And so, <laughs> and so the thief, and he said, "No, you should not do this. You should not let me lose." Because if you let me lose, if you don't uh, give me the punishment that I deserve, is you're going to give a bad example for all the other thieves, all the other murderers in in the society. And I prefer to die than to continue like this. Wow! So impressive. And and so the judge probably didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, since it was his desire, I mean, he could even want. Yeah. And so yes, they had the next day. They they uh, he was hung on the in, in the street. In the in the public square, right? in the in the market, in the town square, right? that's yeah. how they had it. In the, and the whole town was uh, in assistance. They were all watching. And as soon as he died, as soon as he was, they he was hung. He was hung. The whole town went uh, applauding. Yeah, he's a saint. A saint has died today. A saint has died. And he became like the hero of the town, kind of. I'm sure they took a relax and God knows that's what. Impressive. So no, I was saying uh, maybe. It's uh, impressive it, what when you give yourself in Ali's hands what she does. I remember uh, some time back, I heard this about a couple of of 
of uh, brothers who had gone they required in a certain house of ours they had gone to a certain place to a lady to ask for donations for a certain project that they were doing and this lady was uh, before they could talk to her she started telling her her problems how she was broken she was despaired she was in despair because she was a chain smoker she said her health was ruined she was doing bad to herself and they asked me but how my lady how many how much do you smoke no oh, i smoke at least 30 cigarettes per day so that is absurd and she was killing herself <laughs> and i need i need uh, i need help i need uh, help to come out of this man said this brother said let's make a deal these cigarettes that you're going to do you normally smoke you're going to leave in our lady's hands we came here today to ask you for a donation now the amount that you would normally spend on cigarettes if you give it how much you spend per month so she made like some i spend so much per month on cigarette that was very high because of all that she would smoke right. you give this to i don't know what that was for, to build the church or whatever they required they are uh, you give it for this cause and then you have to ask our lady to take this into account to give you the grace to be free from it and she never again had to smoke she never again smoked she did that i mean when you give yourself in our lady's hands i think that thing that's yes. one of the most beautiful part of the consecration we do to our lady because Yes. When we become slaves of our lady, a sacrifice, a fasting, anything that we do always has value. But like you said, it depends on how you face it. It can be something merely mundane, like I'm fasting uh, to grow thin, which is a human end, or I'm doing it for a higher reason. But when we are slaves of our lady, when we do the consecration to our lady, we're giving everything that we have in her hands, so that automatically, for everything that we do is offered to our Lord Jesus Christ through her hands. and is offered as a most perfect sacrifice that she yes. herself would do not the imperfect sacrifice that we do exactly and that's one of the I most beautiful that, parts and that's probably uh, we're getting to that it's probably the secret yeah of fasting better because we've yes. done all all of these other uh, sacrifice we can uh, understand the the reasons and everything but all of this is an effort that we have to do of course with the uh, help of grace but it's our lady yeah. who is actually the one who gives us the strength who fall, who, who brings us along he she takes us by the hand if we turn to her yeah in sh- in a short time we'll be fasting well we'll be doing a, an excellent lent we'll be whatever if if she help this thief this <laughs> wretched man mm-hmm. of course she's yeah. going to help each and every one of us yeah all of us and we don't have to be better or worse to be helped by a lady what we have to be is devoted to her we have to especially though the the slaves of our lady give ourselves entirely to her put up uh, ourselves give up ourselves entirely in her hands <laughs> and she's going to guide us we make the effort but it's a little bit like Uh, a baby that sometimes is in her arms and sometimes walking along B- but is so small that needs to be held by her. held by the hand yes and it needs to go to another city walking hmm. how's it going to go without our lady impossible yeah oh no it's better to crawl it's better to whatever no It's better to be in our lady's hands. Yeah. Yes. And that's what we do when we make the consecration. Father, I remember in your course uh in the consecration course there's a part uh, where they say that uh, our lady like there were many saints the two things about fasting that I remember from the from the consecration is that uh there are so many saints in the past who have suffered and fasted for 40 days and 365 days or whatever uh, and uh gone through all that suffering but by doing a consecration to our lady we can attain a, a a higher degree of sanctity yeah without all of that without uh, is that we i'm not if i'm if we have to right do our said. suffering we have to fast I proportional remember. to what we have but then it's she she's going to multiply it every one uh, it's like i don't know i am investing for every putting in a very monetary language for every one uh, gold coin that i put in the chest she puts 10 for me that's much more than 10 and she puts she does she gives everything she has for us she multiplies what we do in her scale yes. like a lady she was opening just by opening a door 
she gave more glory to God than Saint Lawrence uh, exactly. burning on uh, on the stake on the yeah. on the as a, on the grill on the grill. And and it's it's true. And, and it's in a certain true. sense, we who are slaves of Our Lady, uh, did it, Father. Yeah, that's very true. And actually, as as the church grows and advances in in virtue and uh, in graces, because as time passes, the church grows in grace and sanctity. Not not in all the visible. Sometimes we don't see how it's happening, but there are souls that maybe so saintly that in a few souls that are very saintly, they show the sanctity of the church more than before. Yeah. Yes, in the, especially in the eyes of God. Now, the further we go along, the further we arrive at what is called the reign of Mary. Mm. What St. Louis de Montfort says. And the closer we come to the reign of Mary, the closer that is uh, the closer we are to that time in which it's necessary that our lady's virtues and graces are are shown to humankind. Yeah. To all of us. And so in the beginning of the church it was very much more common that people go to the deserts and they fast for uh forty days. Not that they didn't need the help of God or Our Lady, in a sense, but it was more necessary, let's say, yeah. for the church to have saints that were like that. Not that, or not saying that we have, we don't have to fast anymore. Yeah, yeah we're, imagine oh, about exactly. fasting, but the fasting that we do, that we are able to do, many times is not like what yeah. they receive the graces for that. In those times, mm. because the graces that we're going to receive are much more linked to Our Lady's glory of nowadays. So maybe yes. our efforts might not be so great. We're going to do so now. We're a whole thing about fasting, and it's just so easy. Could yeah. that be the reason? Is Father? that true? But linked with Our Lady's merits and with God, it may be more meritorious. Yeah. Then another so one that is more suffering. And our ladies We don't know that. because it's not the absolute amount of suffering. Yes. But it's the suffering well accepted, but linked to the accepted. merits yeah. of the Blessed yes. Virgin Mary. I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, I will. Uh, it, it, it could be that uh, since we're slaves of Our Lady, we are suffering as if Our Lady was suffering, and maybe that's. That's Our what it means, right? Presence our suffering to a great extent. Yeah. Yes, because we are part of her. We are because her merits are transferred to us. As long as we don't close, as Saint Louis de Montfort says, mm. as long as we don't uh, close ourselves to those graces that we receive from Our Lady, yeah. our graces and our merits will be participating in the merits in the merits of the blessed virgin and she will be transferring her merits and her gifts and virtues to each one of each and every one of her slaves i was just thinking father also that um the church in the beginning uh, there were long days of fasting i think they used to fast in advent as well and and they would fast the whole 40 days and not just two days and then slowly the church started uh kind of As a mother, right? She started uh, having. Uh, She saw that the man kind of was weaker and weaker over time, was more, more frail. And also, their phases of the church yes. were, as if to say, the Holy Spirit wants to uh, make shine certain virtues. Yes. So the penance, as a way of doing penance or, or suffering, as if to say, the church as a as a soul for. Not the Old Testament as the Jewish people, but as the as humankind had been very far astray. Even if, when we see the, mm. the 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 Jewish people, they were not so faithful to Moses uh, many times. Mm. Uh, it was it was it was yes. many difficulties that we see in the in the scriptures, and as if to say there was a, a certain. Suffering that had to be as a collective suffering, mm. and depending on the the phase of, of the, the Holy Spirit, he wants to go showing 
different graces, but not making the other ones disappear entirely. That's why we have uh, we have fasting until today. Yeah. Not only will yes. we have fasting until today, we're going to have fasting in until the, the end. Uh, to yes, the of world. course. Of course, yeah. But of. maybe the perspective will be much more splendorous yeah. uh, about uh, confronting that, yes. that sacrifice. Yes, that fasting, which uh, a lot of fasting produces an X amount of grace, for example. I, uh, and yeah, we don't know exactly. but <laughs> but And now, with our lady... That same fasting can produce thousand X. Yeah, times. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Comes exactly. To the, no? the uh, yes, because for example, one time our founder he commented this that there was a person that had a, 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 a historical figure that had committed great sins, but if he were to make pray a hail mary perfectly he would make reparations for his whole life. Mm. Not because Hail Mary in itself would have that grace, but because praying that Hail Mary well, so well, Our Lady would him. assume him so much that she would transform him entirely. It all depends on the will of God. Yeah. It all depends on, on grace, and grace depends much more than on the suffering that you're going through or not. Depends on whose giving you the grace, who is taking care of you, yeah. who you have friendship with. <laughs> if we have friendship with Our Lady, <laughs> uh, to such an extent, we might uh, be entirely, we see many more graces than another person that might have spent 30 years suffering in the desert. For example, there was a case of a, of a person, he became a saint, but after converting, after his suffering in the desert. <laughs> Why? Because he went to the desert to do penance. Yes. And then one day after 30 years in the desert, he saw an another person that was uh, suffering in the, in the desert, that was doing penance in the desert. They died and he saw their soul going up to heaven. <gasps> Impressive. But then he heard a voice of the angel, of his guardian angel, saying, "It was a, it was a, a woman. She, in six months of uh, of offering up penance in the desert, has gained more graces than you with thirty years in the desert." Oh my God! <laughs> and he said, "Well, why thirty years in the desert? It's much more difficult than six months." And then the angel said, "No, it's because she was sent to the desert by the will of God." And you wanted to go to the desert because you wanted to show to God that you could do it. That you could do it. You, your efforts. Oh, it, you didn't. You weren't entirely taking into account the desires of of the will of God. He adapted because it wasn't entirely something that was bad, of course. Yeah, just something good. But, but now, follow the will of God mm. entirely. So, and his vocation was not to die in the desert. He went huh. back. And sanctified himself out. Oh. I don't remember right now the, the name, but yes. it was uh, a very beautiful story. It's a very beautiful story, and I think it's a very good note for us to end our podcast speaking about about how we found out how how to suffer the right way, how to how fasting can be done easier, much more fruitful as it is now, as long as I guess the most important point in everything we said is exactly. devotion to Our Lady. In fact, Father, this um, this podcast is especially dedicated to the slaves of Our Lady. And I'm sure most of those who are watching us today have done the consecration to Our Lady. But in case you have not, you would like to, we'll leave a link in the description of this video for you to take a look about what is this consecration and whether you'd like to do it yourself. Now, Father, can you give us a final blessing asking for us to take this Lent and the rest of our life in the right spirit of penance and fasting? Of course, let's ask. The, the blessing of God through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We should do everything through her intercession, even if we don't uh, materially remember, but we put it in all of our actions as a general intention always. But the more we remember, the better. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Salve Maria.